All right, welcome to Musicali Focus with me, Musicali's editor, Joe Sparrow. And in this episode, we're discussing the past, present and future of Latin music on a global scale with Jesus Trevino Alarcón, who is Senior Director for Latin Global for streaming platform Tidal. Jesus has a deep connection with Latin music and culture. He's a Webby-nominated content creator who's covered music, TV, film and more for over 17 years as a reporter editor, producer, and curator before he joined Tidal. Now, what is this Focus podcast? Well, Music Ally provides, as you know, an analysis-rich, contextual guide to the music business. And each Focus episode looks at one meaningful music business story. This podcast is also going to be quick and should take no longer than the time it would take Paolo Scanavino to enter into and burst out of 125 giant balloons. He climbed into and burst 11 of them in two minutes, in 2012. And Paolo, it must be noted, is not only a professional clown, but also juggles with fire. Now, talking of things blowing up with a lot of noise, in recent times, Latin music has solidified its status as a true global music superpower. So we spoke to Jesus about his observations of Latin music's recent successes, which music and cultures will spring to international prominence from Latin music culture next, and the possibility of innovative international collaborations. We also got some insight on how audiences engage with Latin music around the world. It's a fascinating conversation, so let's hop straight over to Jesus now. Okay, so we're very happy to welcome Jesus Trevino Alacon, Tidal's Senior Director for Latin Global, to the Focus podcast. Hi, Jesus. Hey, Joe. Thanks for having me. Uh, Great to have you here. Now, you've been a title now for over five years, a significant <laughs> period of time. And in that time, we've seen Latin music solidify its status as a global genre superpower. Um, so you've got this quite interesting perspective, having been in Latin music for a very, very long time and having very deep knowledge and also working at Tidal. So can you talk us through the evolution of Latin music in this past five years while you've been at Tidal? from the perspective of the Latin industries and also from a global perspective, please. Of course. Um, so I've always said that the evolution of Latin music is is all due to hip-hop. Because um, hip-hop, it, you know, it starts with, you know, the, the genres that we're talking about specifically in Latin is reggaeton and Latin trap. Uh, and reggaeton, both of those genre, sub-genres are extensions of, of hip-hop. And if you remove the the language... If you don't look, if you look at Bad Bunny, if you look at Osuna, look at Chicago G, and don't you know they don't speak at you, they don't speak to you, they're like they're American rappers, and that's really what it boils down to. So, you know, hip hop is such a such a behemoth of a, of a genre that it is pop culture today, and these these artists they grew up with it. You know, they grew up with, you know, the Nas's and the Jay Z's and the Wu Tang's and Little Kim, Fifty Cent. And by the time they're they're creating music, they can't help but be influenced by it. Um, so I think that's and it's it, for I think if you want to get time timeline wise, it really started with Nicky Jam's El Pedro El Perdón, uh, the one he did with Enrique Iglesias. I think I believe that was like 2016 or something like that. Um, and then of course then you had Despacito, uh, but you know, but you have these songs are very even though they're pop, they're leading to in you know the reggaeton you know, uh, and, and reggaeton. So, you know, so you have someone like Daddy Yankee on Despacito, who is, you know, essentially our 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 go our greatest of all time uh, reggaetonero, um, creating this pop song with Luis Fonsi, but literally rapping over the beat. So, <laughs> it's it's really attributed. I attribute it to to hip hop. If someone says otherwise, I say they're wrong. <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, like yeah, that 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 really has been it. And obviously, they but they've taken it, they've been influenced by hip hop, and then then they, they've taken it to another level, incorporating say like what Bad Bunny did this year with Un Verano Sin Ti, incorporating all these sounds from the Caribbean, you know, whether it was Dominican Republic or Puerto Rico, and making it. I think we're at a point now where these artists are, you know, yes, influenced by hip hop, but making it their own and making sure to to incorporate you know, native sounds, not just hip hop. So I think that's where we're at right now. That's been the evolution of of these artists so, and, and the music. From outside of the Latin region, we've we've experienced this explosion, but in, in a in a different way because you, you you tend to get, like you said, these big these big tentpole songs 
pushing through first and then bringing uh, other artists along and, and then the under, you know, the sort of tunnel of understanding goes like that. Um, our international audience is becoming more choosy, more nuanced in their understanding as well. I think they, they are. I think they are. And that definitely has to do with um, the artists, but it definitely has to do with DSPs in general. Like they've presented it in such a way that it's digestible to the non-Latinx uh, consumer. Um, and also to the artist, the artist that, you know, they'll sneak in a Spanish, uh, an English word in their hook because they understand, they understand that they need to give someone something to the audience that isn't Spanish speaking. And guess what? Not every Latino in the U.S. speaks Spanish. Like, so that, that, that is another, uh, another area that, you know, people, we have to understand as well. So, so yeah, I think it's get def definitely getting better where like they, the audience can understand what, what is what within Latin. Hmm. And as you said, the, the concept of, Latin music is is a very broad brushstroke. It's it's a it's a very big umbrella term. It's a series of exciting genres and industries that vary a lot from place to place. Mm -hmm. So you're able to take stock. You've been working in the space for so long um, at Tidal and before then. What um, geographic or cultural or genre areas within Latin? music are you particularly excited by at the moment and what sort of artists can we look out for i definitely am intrigued to what's happening within cumbia cumbia is a very one of the oldest genres that we have in latin you know originated in colombia then it went to mexico and central america and there hasn't been a lot of toying with it like a lot of a lot of the iconic bands are like la sonora, sonora dinamita of course elena quintanilla did a cumbia um and her tex-mex version but there's a lot of newer artists now that are kind of like experimenting with the sounds. Um, so that's like something to keep an eye on. And then also R&B in Espanol, so Spanish language R&B. Uh, it's something that's been bubbling for like now for a while. Uh, you know, you have artists like Ima Sol from Mexico, uh, Mavi Land, who is from Colombia. She's an amazing example. She not only does R&B in Espanol, but also Latin Alternative. And she also raps. Um, she has this great, uh, she's a, I want to say she was an audio visual, uh, major in college. So she, her videos are pretty awesome. Um, and if there's one region, I would say one country that I'm really excited about, I know everyone's talking about Chile and Argentina, but for me, it's really Venezuela. Um, um, you know, unfortunately, as you know, when there's strife in a country, the best art comes out of that. Right. And that's, what's happening right now. So whether it's a cappella, which is, he's a, really really like straight hip-hop artists but or then you have a uh, people like micro he is you're gonna hear the same the guy's a pop star like he's a star he's a pop star but he does he has this one song called um what was it i think it was called it, it just intro and and it was a christian it was a christian rap he was talking about about God, which isn't, you know, even though we are really, uh, traditionally we are religious, very religious, we don't really talk about that in reggaeton, but he's talking about it. And yeah, those, those are the areas that I'm excited about. I, mean, I can go on as far as artists, you know, Villano Antillano, uh, Fade, who was one of my personal favorites. I think he's right at the cusp of, at breaking out, you know, as a superstar. So, yeah. When we look at it from this international perspective, because one of the, of course, the, the key uh, traits of the music industry in the last decade is seeing stars emerge from anywhere around the world and breaking globally uh, in markets perhaps where they wouldn't have had that kind of penetration before. Um, when you look at this, you've just mentioned a bunch of really high quality, varied artists across different genres, different styles. Do you, are you able to look at them and say, oh, I think, I think that th this one, for a particular reason, will work internationally over these ones? Or is it, you know, is there, is, can you look ahead like that? Or is, is there something, is it difficult to do that? Um, I, I don't look at specific regions. I, I say they're going to be successful. I think they're just going to be successful in, in general. And I think it's, a, you know, you know, this as a, as a journalist, we're always looking at to what's next. And I've taken what I've, I did as a journalist early on and apply that to programming and curation. 
and I'm I'm pretty on it. <laughs> like, but and when people ask you to explain it, we're like, we just can't. It's just, you know, you you first you look at the talent, and then as someone that that is the disposition, we find out we we think about how we can help this artist, how how we can help them, you know, go beyond what they're doing now. Uh, I mean, I don't know about you, Joe, but like, I love it when I see an artist that has like a thousand followers on social media. <laughs> and they're amazing. I'm like, oh man. A little part of me is like, I don't want to, I want to keep them all to myself. But then, yeah. of course, <laughs> want to bring them to the world. So, yeah, so it's not a, I wouldn't say region by region. I just say, is this artist going to be successful? And and how can I help? How can I, how can I play a small role in this to, to help yeah. them get to the next level? I mean, you have a, a quite hands-on approach to, to, in terms of the title playlisting. Mm-hmm. You create c- contextual content about, artists the music um for, for title users to consume so they understand it and, and they can get into it um what what have you learned about how people are consuming latin music is that you know did you have you seen any sort of behavior any data whilst doing that yeah so i would say that since since uh tw- and you're right and thank you for saying that that we in general not just myself the whole team take this really seriously and we listen to everything that's one of the things that across the board the the industry is like wow you listen to everything <laughs> <laughs> and you know on, on the latin side it's at least i would say not including albums about 200 songs a week so mm. we because guess what there might be the next j balvin in that one the next carol g in that one like i don't want to miss out and play start playing stop uh you know playing catch up but uh, but in, I would say in the last since since the pandemic since 2020, we have seen an uptick in our in our rising playlist in particular. So our rising Latin playlist, which I love, um, so it's actually nearly doubled uh, over 91 percent as far as like streams. Um, and those are the that's that one's the best one. Like if you want to discover what's next, it, it might not be like in the next month. It might be what's next a year from now but that's the playlist that I, I i personally love because that can that's that one houses everything it houses like the reggaeton cumbia um you know pop varambina espanol as far as they're rising and that's it actually really warms my heart that I, it actually people are listening to that to that playlist yeah so yeah and um you know, that, that process that you're talking about there you know you're listening to hundreds of tracks um, I think you, any of us who've worked in the music industry have sort of done that at some point where you, you have this fire hose of new talent and you listen to it. Um, when you, you you listen to all this new stuff coming through, what, what's your, you've obviously done this for a while now, what, what sort of changes have you spotted? Is, is there a sort of, um, is it in terms of maybe in volume or quality or... Is, is, has there been a change in the last few years? I mean, definitely volume. I definitely would say that there's more music coming out um, year after year. And I mean, qual- I have a person. I have a personal playlist. I've been here five plus years, and you know, and doing so every week, I I might select one or two songs that make it to my own personal playlist. And and I, I tell the artists when I do meet them, I'm like, listen, you're on my personal playlist. I actually really enjoy your music. It's, it should be a badge of honor only because I can think about it. I'm listening to hundreds of songs every week and you made it. Um, and, so, and I always thank them because I'm like, thank you for your art. Um, but yeah, I would say the volume is, you know, just it keeps on growing and growing. And, you know, we get these, you know, we get these uh, feed if fed to us, by whether it's labels or managers or publicists. I personally go through my Instagram um, every two weeks because I get messages in there and I'm like, I'm like, who knows? I might find something good in there. So, and, and sometimes I do. Yeah. And what, what do you think drives that? I mean, obviously the, obviously the whole industry is growing rapidly. So there's a, there's a supply and demand thing there. There's, has, has it been driven by anything else? This, this increase in volume, is it in a cultural sense or a, um, a technological sense or an infrastructure sense? I think it's 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 all it's a mix of everything, right? Um, you know, I, I think to a fault sometimes artists in general don't let music breathe. So if they put out some, uh, you know, Joe Spar- Joe Sparrow puts out a great song like last week, and everyone's like, oh wow, this is a really good song, 
but it's not, you know, hitting the charts. It's not getting playlisted as much as they wanted it to. You know, they're like, all right, let's hit them with another one this week and another one this week. And then the next thing you know, that song was better than the other ones that they released and it gets sh- overshadowed and that's it. Yeah. That's it. That it, You you kill your own song. So I think the volume is is not, in general, not a good thing, especially for developing. You know, I, I think uh, for any artist, but especially for developing artists, you know, like we, you need to just let it breathe. Okay, and just to jump in here, if you're finding this useful and you'd like more of this in-depth news and trusted analysis waiting for you in your inbox every morning, as well as access to all of our industry-leading reports, head on over to musically.com slash subscribe. And you, yes, you may be eligible for a free Music Ally subscription via our corporate and sponsored subscriptions. So if you work for a DSP, a major label, an indie label, or if you're an artist manager an employee of a CMO or a publisher, you can check to see if it's available for you. Uh, it's musically.com slash subscription dash options. There's a link below the podcast to check out as well. Okay, let's go back to the interview. Um, looking ahead then, we, we've seen this rapid internationalization of music. Um, Latin music is being enjoyed at scale all around the world by in countries everywhere different audiences and and so is k-pop and afrobeats um and these are coming from very different parts of the world and connecting with people all over the world which is fantastic so if we look forward to the next five years how do you see latin's music what's the role it will play in a sort of international sense um you've mentioned all these great uh genres and local um uh, approaches and scenes how will it evolve looking forward in an international sense i think it would be they play the role as a big sister big brother right because they i've always said before any of those afrobeat k-pop latin music was the first you know global music whether you go back as far as you know Celia cruz in the 60s and 70s in the 80s where you had gloria stefan who was obviously on the u.s side but creating latin music and then ricky martin and j-lo and shakira um you have all these artists that we were, you know, we were, they were there first and our, our music and culture was, you know, there. And then if it wasn't for them, then I don't know if we would be talking about K-pop and Afrobeat as, as successful as they are now. And, and I see a lot of synergy with both of those genres. Like I, I would love to see a Burner Boy collaboration with Ed Alpha and uh, K-pop is already doing those collaborations with, uh, with Latin. Um, so I think it's more of a like, you know, more collaborations. Also, these artists looking to Latin artists to, you know, really show them the way how to how to tackle the international music scene. You know, the way they have for for many decades now. Uh, of course, there's you know, as you said, as as we know, it's been, you know, the Latin uh, the Latin boom of the late '90s and the and the rebirth of the last couple of years. But at, the, at this point, because of the internet and because of you know artists like Bad Bunny and Dalvin and Carol G, like. You know, we're not going anywhere. So I would say, yeah, sort of like the big, big brother, big sister giving advice to those artists and those genres. Interesting thing you said there about collaboration, you know, which uh, is always a really good gateway to bringing Mm -hmm. an artist or a music or something to another audience. And that's a really interesting thing you mentioned there about going across what superficially seem to be very different uh, genres or uh, movements of music but actually you can see how an afrobeats collaboration would work really well with with somebody from a, a latin uh, yeah, correct country do, do, do you think that that's i mean there's two approaches there isn't there the one is that you can follow a diaspora and you can you can sort of connect with a community that's somewhere else in the world but the other one is kind of really exciting isn't it but perhaps two communities of artists who perhaps would not have had the opportunity to connect before so is that something that you think we're going to see a lot more of oh uh, absolutely absolutely um let's put it this way i i personally I, when i was a kid I, my parents are from, are from ecuador i'm from brooklyn they would send me to ecuador every summer and i was a really i was really into hip-hop and i would go down there from new york and dressed in hip-hop gear i looked like an alien to them <laughs> i looked like an alien to them but if that happened today those kids would probably be dressed like me because of the internet, because, yeah. uh, because of DSPs. So um, I think that 
is long gone, especially also, you know, back in the day, remember everything would hit New York first. So we would always be on top of everything, whether it's trends or music. So I think it's, re- it's democratized music and I'm excited for those collaborations and especially those, th- those unexpected ones, whether it's a, it's a K-pop and Latin, you know, country and Latin, like they're, they're, they're there and the artists want to work and I'm excited for that. And d- does that, I mean, you, you, that's a, a vivid picture you've painted there of the, uh, the Brooklyn kid going to, uh, and, and people treating you like, uh, like an alien. I mean, is it, now obviously you're, yeah, you're right. It, it's, we're completely internationalized culturally. Mm-hmm. Does, do you think that, that young audiences then, they, do they have this, any form of mental separation geographically, or is it just music is music? I think everything music fits music. everything goes together yeah everything goes together it's, it's music is music um can i can i can i shake my you know can i shake my my stuff at the at the club to this song i don't necessarily need to learn know the language but if it's vibe it's a vibe so that i think that's long gone and you if you step into any club in any any city in the world they will be playing like they will be playing a lot of latin music it's just it's it's a no-brainer um you know, I was in. I remember going to an Oslo, uh, our 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 um, teammates in Oslo. I was there for their Christmas party a couple of years ago. They played Gasolina Daddy Yankee, tore the house down. <laughs> we'll put some links uh, around the podcast to the um, the playlist you mentioned and some of the artists you mentioned as well, so people can check it out. Now, before we before we go, one more question that I've been asking everybody recently, probably the most difficult one people often find is. And to get a sort of flavor of who you are and uh, some context, if you could only have one piece of music, what would it be? <laughs> it's a really tough one. But, um, yeah. I mean, I have to say, uh, this is not what you expected. I don't think you're going to expect this. Uh, a Tribe Called Quest. Oh, right. uh, yeah, fantastic. I, 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 they, I fell in love with music and, and to, with hip-hop because of them. And I, I always personally identified with Q-Tip because mm. he was, you know, smart kid that grew up in the hood. And that was me. I grew up in not a great neighborhood in Brooklyn. I was smart. Um, but I loved hip hop. And yeah, like I they I, I encourage anyone who hasn't listened to Tropical Quest, go listen to a Tropical Quest. They are yeah, I will second that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> they are phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, phenomenal. Fantastic. Great choice. Yeah, fantastic. Put, I'll put a link to some tribe as well uh, below the podcast. Uh, it's always good to have that excuse. So, um, Jesus, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Joe. This is great. Appreciate it. And there we go. So if you found that useful, please share this podcast on with someone else who you think will also get something out of it. And if you'd like to email me and uh, give me your thoughts, it's joe at musically.com. That's joe at musically.com. Don't forget we have a free weekly email called The Knowledge, which rounds up a bit of this and a bit of that, of the best analysis, news, marketing, insight, and skills from Music Ally. There's a link below the podcast, so sign up and impress your boss. Uh, And don't forget as well, you can check out to see if you are eligible for a free Music Ally subscription. That link is also beneath the podcast. So that's it for me, Joe Sparrow. Uh, Until next time, farewell.